Man, grease me up, woman! Hey folks, this is Chris Scotsman. Mapping tools are finally getting to a place where they're not only functional, but the interactivity level and control over NPC behavior is getting closer to what I believe is needed in order to make really solid campaign maps. Once again, I want to offer my thanks to the Boneworks modding community, and especially Trev TV and Marinera, as their help and feedback has been essential in writing these tools. I'll start by pointing out a design flaw in my initial trigger-related release of the custom map Unity tools and custom map interactions. I was extremely focused on keeping things simple and approachable, and I let that cloud a few key points of usability. Namely, while it was neat and tidy to have objects nested as children of the triggers that act upon them, this had obvious drawbacks given that parent properties propagate to their children. This has been fixed. To handle this, triggers now have a slightly more complicated prefab, but hopefully their usage is straightforward. You have an empty container game object. This can be renamed at will to help describe the trigger's actions and its targets. Immediate children of this object are two all caps containers whose names are required to stay all caps and spelled as is. Custom map interactions will specifically look for the container and game objects of trigger holder and trigger targets, and then act upon the trigger and target children accordingly. A lot of benefits come from this slightly more complicated hierarchy though. First, triggers can now be moved and scaled at will without impacting anything nested under them. They can be reordered much easier as you no longer need to unnest and renest children as you change their position in the hierarchy. The same goes for NPCs or objects that are targets to be acted upon. Another quality of life improvement, as I've learned a bit more about Unity's editor interface and some basics on serialized objects, is that there's no longer any need to apply settings. Now, if you make a change in the inspector, it will update the appropriate localized text field which is what actually supplies data about the items and NPCs being spawned or triggered to Boneworks at runtime. Furthermore, when you drag something like a custom NPC or trigger prefab into the scene, it will automatically unpack, again saving you needless clicks. Finally, some of the editor gizmos have been updated. For triggers, you can now recognize the type of trigger being used by the color of the line that connects them, as well as slightly fainter lines that connect a trigger with its targets. For example, triggers that will target the player are red. Waypoint triggers are connected by green lines. Spawn type triggers use orange, and so on. If you dislike the web of lines this creates, you can simply toggle it off in the trigger holder object for each trigger group. Let's now dive into some actual behavioral changes. As I had hoped to provide, NPC and player-specific permissions are now online. You can set whether a trigger will be player-only using this toggle. You can also set a trigger to only respond to the object or NPC that collided with it, or leave it at the default behavior, which activates all of a trigger's targets the moment it is activated. To demonstrate the difference, watch as these NPCs travel around these waypoints. Notice that as soon as any one of the NPCs hits a trigger, marked by these yellow squares on the ground, all of the NPCs that are part of this waypoint chain will immediately start walking to whatever destination was just activated. This activate all targets behavior can be really useful. For example, when you're spawning in groups of NPCs as soon as the player enters an area, or let's say that you wanted to trigger the movement of multiple objects, like an alarm system being set off by the player. Note that spawned NPCs using the move to function can have any object as a destination. However, if their destination happens to be a trigger, the spawned NPCs will now automatically adopt the behavior of the destination trigger. This means that as these corrupted nulls reach the waypoint destination, they will join the other nulls and start following the waypoint chain. Now, this activate all targets behavior isn't probably what we want when it comes to NPCs pathing around. Instead, what makes a bit more sense would be to have only the object or NPC that collides with the trigger be activated by it. This way, NPCs that are already navigating the waypoint chain will continue on their loop uninterrupted, even though other triggers are being activated like so. I tossed Trev TV some changes to custom map item spawner that should provide proper behavior when spawning using triggers. So now, if an NPC is set to be deactivated in the inspector, they will not spawn when the map loads, allowing them to be spawned later using triggers. We've already seen this with the corrupted nulls. We'll see it again in a combat scenario shortly. Included in this update to custom map interaction, are the rigid body movers that I demoed before in various ways, either in the pathing damage area, void balls, or in the forged skee ball test. 
Those videos might be useful to see if you're unfamiliar with those references. The player damaging rigid body movers are included as a prefab that you're welcome to modify as needed. I haven't put together a custom interface for them yet, but if there's a desire for it, I can do so. These movers don't have to be spheres. Removing the damage component and turning the rigid body into a cube-like shape creates simple elevators and moving platforms. However, as the horizontal platform moves, the player must walk along with it or they'll slide off, regardless of the friction value of the surface. I have a potential fix for this, but it needs some more testing. There's still plenty of uses for a rigid body for which you can lay down a path. There are also speed settings and a wait time parameter that defines how long the mover should wait at a waypoint before moving on. Now, Boneworks is a game all about physics, so I spent a lot of time trying to give mappers an assortment of ways to apply forces to objects, NPCs, and the player. As a result, I've made jump pads. Of course, giving the player a little boost is nice, but it's much more fun to reach new heights. Now, map traversal is one thing, but what happens if we incorporate jump pads into a combat scenario? Let's play test. <laughs> Whoops, forgot to set player only on the spawn trigger, so everything spawned in at once. Let's fix that real quick. In addition to being able to simply set the X, Y, and Z values of a force that's added to an object's NPC or player, I've also included a trigger type called Force Collider Toward Target. These are very handy if you don't want to try to figure out the correct vector values for a certain direction, and say, launch the player towards a particular target game object. The target will handle the force direction, then you just need to set the magnitude. I've also included a Y-axis offset which is particularly handy for allowing you to place the target object on the floor, but still have a nice arc to the jump path. I hope this short demo gets the creativity flowing among Boneworks mappers. Thanks for tuning in.